Guys, 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 if you really like painting rusty things and you want to paint them quick, let's paint up the Ashways terrains together, mostly using washers. Right now, I'm going to share with you guys some time-saving tips of how you can speed up your terrain painting process for your Ashways set. Right here, as you can see, these are my sub-assemblies. So just prepare all these sub-assemblies right here and we can get to painting. So my approach to painting the entire set of terrain for Ashways is just going to be simply using pigments, binders and water. That's it. Because different parts of the terrain will rust at different rates, we're just going to use different coloured pigments to signify that. Right here, you can see new rust tends to be a little bit more yellow, a little bit more orange. As it gets older, it becomes a little bit more orange. And when it's really old and derelict, it becomes like red and almost brown, as you can see right here. So with all those concepts out of the way, why don't you guys prepare all these materials right here? Get them ready and let's get painting all the terrain of Necromunda Ashways. Alright, so after assembly, all the model has been already primed with Krylon Olive Green. And currently, I'm dry brushing over the entire model in a circular pattern using AK Gen 3 Natural Steel. At this point of time, I want to bring your attention to the brush movements that I'm doing on this model. And a circular pattern allows you to evenly coat the surfaces while leaving the recesses darkened. Olive Green was chosen as the prime color as this will very nicely contrast against the orange rust that we will be painting on later. So all the models have already been coated in some kind of metallic color. You can always use a spray can or you can always use a dry brush at this stage. So how do I identify areas with new rust? I would imagine that in the ash rays, there's a lot of wind and stuff going. Areas that are exposed to the wind tend to have new rust because the old rust is always flaking away and these areas tend to get rusted again and again and again. These areas are also high touch points where Maybe there are vents and there are areas where people walk along. These areas, I'll use a lighter colour. I'll be using pigments right here. This is Vallejo Rust. As you can see, it's a very orangey, desaturated colour. And at this point of time, I'm also going to be mixing in some Vallejo O Rust to give a little bit of variation to the colours. So this stage is going to be familiar to some of you who have watched the Chaos Knight Armour Panel video. And I'm going to be adding a lot of water. The mixture is water fresh rust and a little bit of lame medium to ensure that the pigments will stick onto the model after the mixture has been dried. When you're doing this technique, it's always better to apply multiple layers and allow the layers to dry before applying them again and again. When you do that, you tend to achieve multiple type marks and these type marks really make the structure look super worn out and aged. In my mixture, I'll mix in just a little bit of lame medium to hold down the pigments why lamen medium is used is because I want the pigments to clump up in the recesses and this gives it a very rusted look. Alternatively, you can use contrast medium. However, when you use contrast medium, be prepared that the pigments will be very evenly distributed. This is another effect that you might want to achieve maybe on larger, smoother surface such as the hut that we are doing right now. This stage is very similar to the previous stage. It's just that we're going to be changing the colour to make it a little bit more orange and a little bit more red for the medium rust. The pigments that I'll be using for this stage are old rust and burnt umber with a little bit of lamen medium and a whole load of water to break down the solvents so that we can create those very beautiful tight marks. The strategy for this stage is I'm going to be painting at the corners to frame up the new rust that I've created previously and this makes for a very nice effect. So for the next stage, we're going to tackle the areas that have older and more unpolished rust. This rust has been crusting up layers and layers and layers and it has gradually become a bit more red and a little bit more brown. So for this stage, I'll be using two kinds of pigments here. I'm going to be using dark red ochre from Vallejo and burnt umber from Vallejo. These are more red, more brown colours and I'm going to use them very, very liberally. Almost making them into a paste and pasting them all over the stands to make sure that these areas get a very, very crusted look and look really, really worn out. Alright, so with the paste that we've created, I'm just going to slather this all over the model. Because it's going to be a rough texture, you want to focus this in many layers, sometimes focusing it 
near the extremities so that the textures build up more where rust is accumulated. After the first layers, you can gradually fade it up to areas that are a little bit less rusted to create more variation. As a bonus for all you guys who are still watching here, I'm going to be using this new product called Dirty Down. It's, in my opinion, very random, but it produces really great results. So let's have a look at what it produces. So the smell of Dirty Down kind of feels like a little bit of enamel and stuff in there, but somehow it is water soluble. The results also differ of how recently you have shaken the bottle, because if you have shaken it a lot more, there's going to be a little bit more pigment. However, if you didn't shake the bottle as much, there's going to be a lot more color in it. So that's why it produces different color tones, such as this right here, and this right here. Very interesting. Definitely going to do a product review in the future. And this is the final result for the Necromanda head buildings for the Ash Waste box set. I really like how all this turned out. Looking closely at the head building, you can see how the medium rust and the old rust can create some contrast. However, this pales in comparison to the very heavily weathered stand where the old reddish brownish rust is building up. I'm very happy with the results and you should look forward to see me use this technique on this channel a lot more often. So how easy was that? This is how you can achieve very heavily weathered terrain really quickly. So, you like painting terrain really quickly? Want to get even faster? Check this video out right here, where I painted up the entire Q-Team Nakmoon terrain very quickly and very efficiently.